Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to Tuesday, February 14th meeting of the Board of Trustees Property Subcommittee meeting. And we'll start with our continued discussion regarding e-building options and plans. Okay, we've, uh, these architects has provided the uh, construction cost estimate that they promised they would at the end of their uh, services to us, which we have now in front of us. Um, total estimated construction cost, and uh, bear with me, I'm seeing this for the first time, so I'm trying to decipher it at the same time. Seven point four three two one hundred. So within that is uh, in the middle of that first page, inside uh, first page from front cover, title number page two. They have almost a million dollars to sign an estimating contingency at twelve percent escalation to construction start spring of 2024, 6.4 percent. Those two figures add up to almost a million dollars. Um, this was prudent on their behalf to make us aware of potential uh, escalations and, and they do their best to identify the costs today, but they don't have a crystal ball indicating what's going to happen moving forward. Uh, quickly looking through this, it's very detailed, extremely detailed at, for this level, and uh, seems, like I said, quickly looking at it off the top of my head, uh, accurate, um, but haven't really torn it apart. So, we're... Uh, We're at the crossroads yeah, of, uh, well, next week, Wednesday, um, the RFPs for the OPM services will be opened, right? And we're getting three, is that correct, as far as you know? Uh, I think 26 people have taken out stuff in packages. There's three different kinds of Okay, okay, I miss, all right, all right, that was, okay, that was another conversation, Andy and I had. All right. Um, people that inquired, but you don't know how many are actually responding. Right. Right. Okay. And what time is that opening? Um, I think one o'clock. And it's public opening, correct? And where is it being held? Yeah, Conference room. Point out. Like okay. Um, so it will be interesting to see what uh, our costs for OPM services are going to be to start moving forward with this project to help us uh, get out the RFP for design services and hire a design team to put this project together and get it out to bid. Um, so this anticipated in this, this cost summary anticipated start date of April 24th um, appears realistic to me. Um, how is that going to match with what our timeline is for our grant money and having to spend, spend and get? So far, we're, we're still in, on the timeline. We're okay. If I, I can give just a brief overview and update for the subcommittee on where we are financially. Okay. If that makes sense at this point. So, again, as, as just referenced, this is early on, but we're looking at a $7.4 million project at this point. Uh, just as a reminder, sources of revenue, we have our insurance, um, the structure insurance, the lost equipment and tools insurance. We have the first skills capital grant, the second skills capital grant. Assuming we have the economic bond bill from Senator Tumberford and the monetary donation, which I just updated as of this morning. And, so that's uh, what I did. I'm also happy to announce, and we'll talk about it this evening at the board meeting. Uh, Smith College just came through with a letter, uh, and they are granting us a $150,000 donation. Uh, it would be over the course of two years, so $75,000 the first year, $75,000 the second year. So when you add up that all up, uh, to the penny, you're looking at $6,026,109.38. 
31 cents. Uh, which, what was that figure? 6026 109.31 which according to again this early estimate and that estimate as Rick said is accounting for the contingencies uh, we're still just over 1.4 million dollars short uh, if we don't have to realize those those contingencies obviously that gap is closed but uh, I think the point remains we still have a gap at some point, I think we'll have to have a conversation with the board. How do we finalize closing that gap? Uh, but anyways, that's where we're at right now. Okay. And, uh, well, let's get the OPM on board and start deciphering uh, our next steps. And um, at this point, I think... The committee's done its due diligence. Deets Architects did a good job and presented us various plans and and listened to our needs and uh, and responded appropriately. So, any further discussion on this at this time? And we move on and see what happens next. Wednesday, right? Wednesday. I just put all the Okay. All right. So. I a lot of various projects still. Uh, in the pipeline, um, about an update on the uh, the VA Forest Group property, Mark and James. They were utilizing the property. There's lots of stuff being stored. Lots of stuff being stored. We're currently in the process of removing all the overgrown trees, so that when we get permission to use the equipment, we can we'll have the area that we were cutting. All right, so we have that issue with the hoisting yes, license we were, issue. We were visited, you know, and uh, as an educational outreach, and uh, at that point, we knew we could not have the students using the equipment, which is a sad state of affairs. So, uh, at this point, anybody with the, an actual hoisting license can use the equipment in that. Both, both you and Bobby, I believe, correct? We've got three individuals on campus. Uh -huh. Exactly. Well, exactly. I'm sorry. Yes, yes. Okay, so what's the status of this issue? I have had two to three meetings a week with various state agencies and associations. Uh, there is, it's truly a stalemate <coughs> with different state agencies about who's right and who's wrong. So there's no movement at all. There's one school right now, uh, the school that was sort of the, the brunt of all of this a couple of years ago, Keith Tech in Birmingham. Uh, they are sort of the state's guinea pig. They have moved forward to, to apply for the waiver, which is an apprenticeship license. Uh, they brought in a doctor that would conduct the DOT physicals. The cost per physical was 90 bucks, 90 plus dollars. 110 bucks an hour for the doctor. So they were fronting that money to get the DOT physicals. Um, but now another hiccup is nobody knows what the test is about. There is, in essence, no test. Um, so, we'll see how this plays out. Oh boy. So it's unfortunate that the taxpayers have spent millions and millions and millions of dollars on equipment for vocational schools across the state and signed off by the governor and now the students can't use the equipment. <clears throat> well, what test are you talking about? The, the medical test or the, the no? There's the there's no written test for the apprentice license. Oh. They wouldn't just give them the regular test. Either. No, it's a different. There's a yeah. It's in the regular. It's in there in their language of, of what they say is available. I don't think anybody's ever used it. But I don't know how you would have an apprentice. So it doesn't exist. License when you you have to be 18 to get it and you just go get it. So who's going to use the apprentice license? They say it exists for uh, training 
academies or schools, but we don't know who uses it. Well, that is rather unfortunate. Okay. Um, so we're at a stalemate, and you're continuing discussion with so the between, agencies wherever you can. Right. So MAVA, which is our professional association, we've taken it on. Uh, we have been working with the Mass Farm Bureau's Association. Uh, they are actually the group that submitted legislation. Uh, at the state level to change the regulations to allow this to happen. Uh, Bob is supporting them. Uh, I've had now, since our last board meeting, probably three to five meetings with the Department of Ed. Uh, they are trying to reach out to the commissioner who oversees this particular agency, and uh, they're battling it out. Uh, again, the, the issue at hand is student safety. Uh, so both sides are arguing that student safety is a top priority. But who wins out? I, I don't have a solution at the end of the day. I don't know what's, what's going to happen. Okay. okay. All right. So we have that big issue to deal with. I'm very unfortunate. Birds Pit Road, um, Tim, you did some repairs up there. At this point, we're done for the winter. Done for the winter. Things are okay. We're stabilized. Um, that essentially is a filler project when you have time allowed, but don't see anything, any more movement up there. No, this, not till not till warmer weather in the spring, and all the jobs are done here. So. Okay, and then we get the paddock apples storage floor repair. Uh, Cornerstone has been yep, we're hired. Yep, we're supposed to have a, a walkthrough with the contractor and the subcontractors coming up in the next couple of weeks. Um, so I'm going to put out an email to the shops involved in that storage area that maybe he'll decide what's in their storage that they can get rid of and I'll rent a few roll off containers for them. So we have to empty it for them before they can go in. Okay, <coughs> that's slated to start in March at some point? I, yeah, I think so. Okay. Uh, drainage issue at Locust Street Pasture. I know what about a month ago they came out and staked the the bank of the, the Brook Stream to monitor any uh, erosion. Yep, that bond will monitor it for two years. Okay, um, I have neglected to uh, check in with DPW and the status of when they're going to start moving forward with any work. Do you happen to know? Yeah, they, they're all saying spring say in this spring okay the uh, GCC old rec building now becoming our animal science uh, classroom building um, how about an update there Tim moving forward um, Kids are going at their speed. We try to jump in and fill in, keep the project moving forward. We try to keep the date of having the moving the animal science kids in there for March. So. Okay, and this uh, this all dovetails into <coughs> getting this done for the pig barn demolition re in April. Demolition rebuild in April. You you confident? Uh, it's all going to come together at this point. Right now, I'm 100% confident. So. <laughs> well, you made you made, <laughs> you made the comment that you're jumping in when you, when you need to, <laughs> and I understand. Um, well, I've had Giles down there, him and Renny taking down an I beam in the back that one, they wanted to come out, and then reframing the whole back room just to make it look you know more presentable as a uh, locker room. Okay, so we got it. You got the issue of the shops getting in there when they can and getting their work done and trying to meet a deadline and then you jump in when you need to, to help move it along to facilitate it. Yeah. I'll say Giles and Benny have been jumping a lot. I'm surprised you can even walk right now. Uh, so well, I, I just want to appreciate Giles, you, you work down there. Um, a lot of, of, a lot's been done. Just continuous work. Yeah. Happening, yeah. Okay, you're able to take care of all the stuff you, you need to do. <laughs> That's what's crossing my mind when, when you know, we're, we're 
anticipating this to be a, a shop uh, work project and it sounds like you're doing a lot more than than you anticipated or we maybe the school anticipated um, is that affecting the big picture here Joe no we just uh, actually were able to hire another custodian for the daytime to help fill in through the answer grants I think that's where it's coming from so everything's working out yeah I think you know the the plumbing and electrical shops are not really getting assisted by them it's the carpentry the concern is that uh, Chad still has obligations to habitat so he really can only be there every other week and, and on that other every other week that he is there he has a limited number of students mm -hmm. so I think it's really important it's great that Giles and Ronnie can jump in and keep that they're really um, they're doing a lot of the work uh, to make sure that it continues on that pathway because you know we they do have those other obligations right. but the plumbing rough inspection has happened uh, let the electrical rough inspection should happen on Thursday or Friday <clears throat> and all that's going so you know it's really I think mostly around the carpentry that they're really assisting a lot and they're doing a good job okay let's keep things moving along because this all ties into all the other things that fall along behind it and so have you uh, contracted with the, the associated building records or any other uh, associated building got it twenty two thousand two hundred okay um, so you've settled that yep I had the asbestos test on I, I got a quote for doing the, the rodent um, review whatever they call it um, so we're scheduled for April break but if we could get in there earlier I'll, we'll try to push them but right now they're scheduled for April break What was the final on that? Twenty-two something. Twenty-two two hundred. A lot of interest in taking it down too. So. And you're anticipating April break? Yep. Okay. So along with that, um, we're still working with uh, the other architectural firm. That come up with a, an estimate for the feasibility study they just finished. For the pig barn? And companion animal building. But this, this is with Tarowski? Yeah. Two architects, right? Okay. And a lot of that work you anticipate doing in-house? As much as we can. We got window project coming up next week in the yep. building. They'll be here Monday morning to start. I would think they'll be done by Wednesday and Thursday. It's much less windows in the building. Do you know how much it'll affect the lobby? <clears throat> it shouldn't be bad. I mean, bad are replacing those lobby windows. Yep. They are. But that is, um, you know, they'll, they'll take them out early in the morning. So they're done by one o'clock. Okay. Cause we'll okay. have, yeah, we'll have, um, playoff basketball games here next week what days um, we're not sure it could be Tuesday Wednesday or Thursday all right when those get assigned well basketball those that'll be the Western Mass and then it'll potentially state so we have about two more weeks of basketball all right can you find out what dates I have the bleacher repair Thursday and Friday Thursday Friday I think yeah I think they're supposed to drop the boards off but if I have to cancel them, I mean, I'll take the material in if I have to cancel them to labor. Okay. It, the problem is we're, it's going to be, it's not on our um, schedule. They tell us. Should I just cancel it? I think Cancel so. the work and ship it to April. If you don't mind. Yeah. yeah. It's kind of like the aeration we, issue we had. Yep. Okay. Yeah, we don't have control of when they set those. But the April, there's no, unless the weather's foul, that, that should become priority. There's no mandate in size. Yeah, Nothing's, not yet, nothing to be inside on April. Thank you. Okay, now uh, during the uh, December break at A building, uh, 
they did quite well and got more done than they had anticipated as a possible similar scenario here. Yeah, they went right around the building and then, and then came back a day to do some caulking outside, so I anticipate them being done early for the schedule over there. <clears throat> Okay, still um, the AC in, in Building C. Um, hopefully Joe Cook is going to let us post that this uh, Thursday, so a two-week advertising. So you have the design plans from Towsley Associate, you know, Associates all set, yep. ready to go out the bid? Yep. Okay. And you anticipate next week? Going out to bid? Uh, I anticipate opening on March 1st. I figure out whenever that date is for. Um, Joe keeps asking for stuff. Um, he could have given everything he wants. Yeah, I'm going out the 22nd. Being the <coughs> putting the central register for the 22nd. 322? Yep. No, no, two twenty-two. Two twenty-two. And then open the eighth. Okay. And uh, the sidewalk and patio project this summer. So I walked around with Mike Schaefer the other night because he's got all his elevations, and um, we walked around a building, which I want to be the first building we do. And he's his whole concern is um, ADA compliance and reducing any kind of liability. As you walk on the sidewalks we have. Mm -hmm. So he's all about putting in more ramps coming off the corners of the buildings and heading to other buildings and leveling the asphalt and then what to do with the red brick. Do we want to tear it up and put grass, um, which I was kind of against. Uh, maybe just put pavers in there. Uh, but he's gonna, he, we walked around and gave him, we talked about different things. He's gonna have some proposals and we can make some decisions about what we want to do and then go out to bid March on it for the next summer. So, I so it won't eight. be this summer? Oh, yeah. This summer 23. Right. So I'm hope, I, I put this as the main bid. Um, the alternative one would be, uh, first alternative would be C building and then B building and then in front of D, which I'm not sure we should waste our time on. So. Okay. Um. <clears throat> Oh, and also, I might have talked about walking up to the woodlot, trying to find routes to get power and water up there, and him and his guys walk through there. And there's a couple of, you go up the road, and you have that green clearing on your right, and there's a road in the back there that is a beeline for the building, right? So he said that would that would be a good way to bring power, uh, water up, him, him not knowing that the city doesn't want us to tap into their, to the line. And then he had another route through the woods from the um, cell tower, so instead of following the road to cut through the woods and that didn't have any um, conservation implications that he thought of. So he's going to continue to work on that and give us a plan. All right. Your comment about uh, the city not wanting us to tap into their line. Do we have any hope that we can maybe change their mind? Is it I, I'm not, I'm not going to be able to change it. They say it's a high pressure transmission line. So I've been told that, so you can't tap into it. I've been told that if you tap into it, then all the neighbors down below are going to want to tap into it too, because they're fed by a copper tube from Boogie's garage, three quarters of miles away. So you guys can fight that battle. All right. So that's Part another one. battle. Discussion. <coughs> but they did put that whatever that water, the building. So they actually did tap into it. So and like Mike said, it's such a a slope up to the building that that pressure might be all you need to get up there. So. Okay. All right. Um, we're recently. Um, Procured the control management system or the, the the devices for the doors, but I understand uh, we still need to 
get an installation, an installer on board? Thank God I'm not involved in that. So I'd love to figure <laughs> out how it all works out. So. Okay. Um, Josh is going to take the lead on that. Um, and whatever coordination he has to do with Tim around it, he'll do. Um, but he's working with Crystal to take the lead on that project. Okay. So this, this Andy sent out a whole list of stuff we just con or contracting for, purchase orders for. And one was the control management system at 186 plus thousand dollars. And my understanding, it was equipment only, correct? I, I don't know if that is 100% correct, but yeah, I know that Josh, Crystal are going to okay. work on that as Josh is going to take the lead around that install okay. and he's going to coordinate whatever he has to with to make sure that Tim's in the, in the loop. And That's what I found out today. <clears throat> All right, so Josh and IT to take lead. That's essentially the answer for today. Yes. Thank you. But we'll get more. Yes. All right. Um, all right. Fiscal year 24 capital improvement projects. Refresh my memory. I'm drawing a blank here. What did the hood system, the second hood system in culinary along with the hood system in, in the kitchen for the cafeteria. Exciting for all the storage buildings and the multi-species barn. Just those two projects? Hood system inside? It was something else, but I... And we're still waiting for a response from the city. These were all yeah, submitted. But, but you won't find out until March or April. So that's coming soon. All right, so we had the hood system siding at well the, in the the final controls for sea building, right? So we're putting in the mini splits this year for air conditioning, and we have two years worth of control issues to get rid of the pneumatic system and make it all digital. I think that was I think 24 right. and 25. Okay, so we're we're uh, any sense of approval? On these projects, in a positive sense. So I had a city department head meeting last Thursday. Uh, the mayor and the city finance director was talking about this, and it sounds like we haven't heard anything at this point. And I haven't heard anything at this point. I haven't heard from Crystal either. Uh, that is probably positive news. I'll take it for what it's worth. Okay. <clears throat> no guarantee. All right. <clears throat> And then um, some we'd like to, I would like to, and I hope others would like to keep on the radar the issues up at the Smith Farm Fields, up at the dog walking area. It's kind of just hanging out there. A resident did come forward a little while back now off of Birds Pit Road and wanting to approach the board on it and still hasn't. So um, I guess we'll check with Julie when she's here tonight about that. And um, eventually uh, have further discussion in regards to what's going on up at that property. Um, got anything? Any? Does anybody have anything else to bring up? Add to? Clarify? Whatever? Tim, got any things we might not have covered? Um, not that I can think of. Okay. Um, you will see another structure down back. I can thank Giles and the team. Uh, the, the hotel uh, is spelled correctly, hotel. So it's a, an item for our animal science for the, the new calves that come in, correct? So there's a quarantine process. Um, so it basically looks like a hoop house, which is down next to the existing hoop house. So if you have any questions about why you see a new structure, that's what it's there for. Um, so who worked on that project? Giles, you obviously. Farm techs, all the farm techs, all companies, uh, and ready. three, three students. So, yeah, a couple of students helped. Everybody kind of slipped in and helped a little bit. Yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, I do. Um, looking back over my notes, have a couple more issues here. Um, during the summer, <coughs> start the renovation to the multi-species classroom into the park and animal lab. At this time repair all sewer lines coming from the MS barn and pig barn. I have a note here, coordinate with DPW, or 
stay in the loop on this yet? I'm not sure I'm going to put them in that because this is going to be part of the new companion animal building. That's got to get tied into those lines and all those lines have failed. One would be either too shallow because it was all installed by students years ago. So I'm, I'm kind of looking at having a plan drawn up and just have subcontracting that out, have someone just put it in. Okay, so so this scenario is changing some. A little bit, yeah. Okay. You know, that might be a job for Carl's or, or Clark's excavating to do. Um, I'm not sure the yeah. DPW, the DPW would fix one line, but the re, to replace them all, I think it's something they, okay. would, like they wouldn't touch. I just want to, want to keep stuff on the radar yeah. that, that doesn't slip through the cracks and so we're going, no, oh gee, why don't we think of this? That's part of what we're trying to do here. And how about the, uh, for the summer at the auto body shop, the abatement of the existing flooring? If yep, that's all still on, on track. Okay, so have you going to be soliciting uh, abatement bids in the I next got, month I or got, two? I already got a quote. I'm you already? Gonna, yeah, I usually bounce between um, uh, Compass, Compass and um, the other one. Abide? Abide, yeah. Okay, all right. Uh, I, think, I think we pretty much covered it all. Meeting adjourned unless anybody thinks otherwise. Mm -hmm. We all good? Okay.